There's some more tools you can use when you need to solve pipe network problems, so finding flows and pressures in a whole system of pipes. If we look first at pipes in series, so series means the flow goes from one pipe into another pipe into another pipe. In this case, they're medium-sized pipe to a small pipe to a big pipe. We can deal with the flow rates using conservation of mass, and we've actually already done a problem like this. So at, with conservation of mass, we know the flow rates have to be the same in each of the pipes. So that's the first tool we can use. And then it should also be apparent that the energy loss through the whole sequence of pipes is equal to the sum of the energy loss in each of the individual pipes. So the energy lost in one and then plus the energy lost in two plus the energy lost in three is the energy lost through the three of them combined. I think that's all fairly obvious. Um, for pipes in parallel, it's the same idea, but it's kind of turned on its head. So now we have flow going into a junction, being uh, splitting up amongst those three pipes, and then going out into another junction. And when you do this, you really don't control the flow in each of those pipes. I guess you, you could have a valve to control flow in each of them, but let's say we don't. Let's just say that we allow the system to determine on its own how much flow goes through each pipe. And each of those pipes are different diameters in this case. So this is sort of the inverse of series pipes. In this case, now the total flow is the sum of the flow in each of those three pipes. So the flow coming out of this whole system is equal to the flow in one plus the flow in two plus the flow in three. And that's, that's also pretty obvious, and that can be derived using conservation of mass readily. This one is not obvious to me. You can derive it if you do conservation of energy carefully through the system, but just remember that for pipes in parallel, the way the water distributes the flow through those junctions is it makes sure that the head loss is the same in those three pipes. Water always takes the easiest path it can, and the way that works out mathematically is that the head losses have to be the same in each of those three pipes. Notice also that series and parallel, the, the equations are inversions of one another, right? So in series it was the flow rates are equal and you sum the head losses. In parallel you sum the flow rates and the head losses are equal. So that's an easy way to remember to remember it. There's also an analogy with um, electronics. If you look at uh, electron flow or, or uh, electricity flow through circuits, you have similar relationships. Okay, let's do an example. We have flow through this simple network. There are five different pipes and three nodes joining those five pipes. Um, I want you to tell me what the flow rate is in pipe two. We have lengths and diameters. We know the flow rate in pipe three, and these are all plastic pipes with a friction factor of 145. We're going to use the Hayes and Williams equation for this. So how do we find the flow in pipe two? So let's start with those simple relationships that uh, we just learned. So flow rates, we know that the flow in pipe one has to equal the flow in pipe five, right? Because inflow has to equal outflow. And then in parallel there, two and three have to sum together to equal the flow rate through the whole system. We could also say the flow rate in two and four have to sum together because, as we can see, the flow rate in three also has to equal the flow rate in four. Okay, so this is how we can use our series and parallel relationships. For head losses, we can say the head loss in two has to equal the head loss in three plus the head loss in four. And that turns out to be very useful. Um, okay, we can calculate some velocities here. We know the flow rate in three, so the velocity in three is easy to calculate. The, um, the velocity in four can also be calculated because the flow rate, we just said the flow rate is the same in four. So we can do that. 
Okay, now to solve this, I'm going to use that head loss equation which we derived because we know everything in, three and f in pipe 3 and 4 and our only unknown there is pipe 2. If we use the flow rate, we, we need to know the flow rate in 1 or 5 to be able to solve it because we don't know that and we don't know 2. The only thing we know is 3. So the flow rate equation in this case doesn't really help us. Okay, so I'm going to use the head loss equation. We're going to solve this using the Hayes and Williams equation. I'm going to solve it for head loss so I can insert it into our relationship equation. And you can see this is, uh, this is getting pretty ugly already. Okay, so now I've got an equation. I'm going to solve for V2. I know V3 and V4, and I really know all the other variables. Let's calculate the hydraulic radius for pipe 2, pipe 3, and pipe 4. These all have different diameter pipes, so we have different hydraulic radiuses. And then now I know everything in that equation except for the velocity. So I've got V2 times the length of pipe raised to the power of 0.54 divided by my unit factor, divided by C, divided by the um, hydraulic radius raised to 0.63, and then I have to do the other exponent, sum that all up, and I get a velocity of 8.11. I can easily convert that to a flow rate. Okay, so not easy to solve, but uh, it sure beats the Moody diagram. I, I don't know how I would even solve this using Moody. I would have to solve Moody iteratively and then on top of that now I've got three pipes to work with and so I don't even know how you would do that if you didn't have the Hayes and Williams equation. Okay that was a very simple network. What if you have something more complicated? So if you're designing like a water distribution network to deliver water through a town to a town, the the problem is is usually set up like this. The water pipes follow the streets or the sidewalks because you need to have access to them to, to repair them and replace them. And it's also a convenient way to follow the population so you can hit each house, get water to each house. Um, so typically you have the layout and you have flow rates coming in and out based on how much water your water treatment plant delivers to the system. And then you have water being drawn off at different nodes and that's water for the houses that gets delivered to each house. It's normally not done on, a how, on an individual house by house basis but there will be a water usage associated with a whole block that gets distributed to a node for example. So the question is, what size pipe are we supposed to use? So this is, as an engineer, this is how we design the system. The only really designed criteria is what size pipe. And if you use a really big pipe, it's going to be expensive. So smaller pipes are better. But if you use a really small pipe, a really, really small pipe, the velocities and the flow rate increase. Uh, I'm sorry, the velocities in the flow increase, and as a result, you get higher pressure drops. And if you lose too much pressure, then you won't have much pressure coming out of your faucet, and your faucets, and your toilets, and your showers won't work right. So this is how the system is set up. Determine the diameters to provide specified pressure throughout the network, given the required flow rates. Now you can solve this right now. You have all the tools to do this. Um, we use conservation of mass at the nodes, so all the flow rates have to be equal. So you write an equation for each node that you have. And then you, well, you also have to satisfy conservation of energy in each loop. So you work around a loop and what we can say is that the head loss has to be zero as you start at one point, go all the way around and end back where you started from. And so then you go through and you write a head loss equation for each loop. So you get this big long list of equations. If you solve, solve them all simultaneously, it will give you the flow rate in each pipe. So you can pick a bunch of diameters, 
see what the flow rates are, see what the pressures are, and if that works, you're done. If not, then you change a couple diameters, resolve it. So you can see this is not something you'd want to do by hand. This is all done with software. Um, Hydraulicad and EPA Net and KY Pipe are probably the most common. EPA Net is, is actually free software which you can download. Um, we're not going to do that in this class, but I just wanted you to, to see what's out there. If you ever do this in industry, this is how you would do it. And this is all there is to really the hydraulic component to it. The, the rest of the software package is all the mathematics of solving systems of equations. And uh, there you go.